Hello everyone. Welcome back to another exciting session on SQL Server patch management. Um, I've demonstrated that in the version of SQL Server 2016. In this session, we would like to check um, how the service pack upgrade process works from service pack 1 to service pack 2. My name is Saurabh Mukherjee and uh, welcome all from Tech Geeks Den. So with this, let's get started. While doing this activity, the first thing which comes to our mind is why the patching is really necessary. So uh, when it comes to SQL Server 2016 uh, Service Pack 2, the, the additional features which is the flexibility and the enhancement which is, provi which is provided are as follows. The performance and scale improvement for SQL Server, so that includes the improved database backup performance on large memory machines. So we can see improved database backup performance on large performance machines. The second point is the added backup compression support. So it helps performance of almost all the databases. So it applies a more compression ratio as compared to the previous, uh, you know, uh, the service packs which offered. The next point is the supportability and diagnostics enhancements. So this point says that it is provided with an improved troubleshooting and additional information about statistics used during the query plan optimization. So that says it has an additional capability which actually can help getting more information about the statistics which are used for the purpose of query plan optimization. The third point is new improvements based on connect feedback items filed by the SQL Server community. So new improvements as you see it's on, on here already. And the fourth point is some improvements originally introduced in SQL 2014 SP2 and 2012 SP2. So some of the additional en enhancements you might have already observed if you have you had installed in past the 2014 SP2 or 2012 SP4. The next important information which I wanted to share with you all is how to get the SQL Server 2016 SP2. So in the left hand side, um, you can see I have mentioned the download center. So you can directly open this and uh, you can download the, uh, the, the patch. For more reference, you can always go back and refer to this link. Um, it's pretty useful. Now, SQL Server 2016 SP2 or SP2 Express or SP2 Feature Pack are available for manual download and ready for your use. After you install the service pack, the SQL Server service version should be 13.0.5006.0 Microsoft SQL Server Service Packs are cumulative updates. So that says once you apply the service pack, you should always go back to SQL Management Studio and verify that you have the correct version installed. And that says SQL Server 2016 Service Pack 2 upgrades all editions and service levels of SQL Server 2016 to SQL Server 2016 SP2. Now what are the prerequisites of applying the patch? So we need to ensure that we have the appropriate level of access to the server. So that means we have the correct access before we start the patching. Next point is ensure that all the database latest backups are in place. So that includes both full and transaction log backups. If you feel the full backup is pretty big, then probably try to get a uh, differential backup uh, so that you can start the patching sooner. You don't have to wait for another full backup. And for system DBs, ensure you have the full backup. Next point is take the backups of all jobs. If you have, you know, uh, MSDB, so better go to the agent, get all the jobs as a backup. Then download the patch from the source I already mentioned in the previous slide. If needed, stop monitoring and antivirus services. So that sometimes 
hinder the you know installation of the service pack so before that more uh, stop all the monitoring uh, or if you have any third party monitoring service or any antivirus be ensured that you have stopped them close all remote desktop connection before applying the patch so let's say you are applying the patch and there are plenty of other users trying to connect um, using a remote desktop session so it can hinder the performance while you progress on this activity so before that uh, you ensure that you break all the connection by you know logging all those connections out of the uh, remote desktop the next point is run dbcc check the database integrity against all user databases and thoroughly check the report for any kind of issues in the database so before applying the patch ensure you run the check db and ensure that all the databases are in healthy state because if you do not check and later on if you go and verify you might be confused whether it is a part of the patch installation so ensure that before you start with the patching you have checked all these prerequisites very carefully the last point here in the row is check the error log file and ensure that no sql server specific error message is logged so that says before you start with the patching ensure that you have no error logged if you see something take appropriate action before you start with the patching moving on patching process so that is very important so let's say in in the current scenario when you are using 2016 there is more likelihood that you may have always on right if it is a normal instance you don't care you just install the patch right but if you have a always on kind of instance or a active passive kind of instance that first you have to start by applying the patch in the standby that is the secondary node <clears throat> followed by rebooting the node so after you apply the patch in the standby node you have to remember you have to remember to reboot the node okay and uh, once the server that node is back in action check the number of virtual log files and if uh, you see that high number of transaction log the vlfs are pretty higher then do remember to take the transaction log back up that way the failover activity you know the time it takes to do the failover it significantly reduces the next step is once the server is back online continuation to step one fail over the present primary to the secondary instance and make the secondary instance as primary because you have already done with the patching to that node right and then moving on you apply the patch to the old primary which is now acting as the secondary instance and restart that node as well now test thoroughly now in this step also you have to check the vlfs because you want to again fail it back to the previous node right so test thoroughly that the application is working fine no issues in the error log and dbcc check db is completely clean you don't have any sql related error if possible look further and check the summary.log file and detail.log file as well to see if there is no such error is locked so that way it actually works as a clean patching now in the event of any rollback let's say you you feel that you need to do a rollback then what are the choice so again the same thing uh, start with the passive node um, so first go to the passive node remove the service pack uh, from the add remove program under control panel and then fill over the primary node to standby node and remove the sp2 from the old primary uh, older primary or presently standby node server remove the patch from standby node and also reboot that instance so after you remove the patch from each and every server you have to ensure to reboot that instance so that the changes can be reflected in the in the registry and you can see the changes otherwise it might be it might be in a pending reboot status and then test thoroughly that the application is working fine no issues in error log and dbcc check db is clean and finally you have to always go back and refer to the summary.log file and detail.log file and ensure that there is no error logged which is relevant to sql server now in order to apply the patch there are a count of sequences which we would like to follow the first is test the patch in the perf or in the test or in any of the lower environment do not simply apply into the prod because you wanted to know how is the outcome even though you are so confident try to get enough data to understand how the behavior is 
try rollback of patch so when you apply the patch ensure that you again test another rollback so that you know if you are needing to roll back whether all the steps are really matching what we have discussed if you feel any additional steps are really needed which hopefully not try to lock that and then revisit that at a later point secure appropriate downtime window to carry out the task so estimate how much downtime you need and then based on that you start carrying out the work so finally thanks for watching I'm sure this is one of the very important um, you know, uh, topics which we uh, in a production live environment we frequently carry out and I'm sure the steps discussed have been very useful for you and you can very comfortably uh, carry out the steps. Do comment, like, subscribe if you like the channel and the video and do let me know if you like to visit any new videos in the upcoming sessions. Thank you. Bye all.